announce that this is the Ordinance Committee meeting of February 18, 2015. I'm going to announce that we are video and audio recording, that Pam is taking copious notes. Um, I'm going to introduce Councillor Carney and Councillor O'Donnell, and I'm Councillor Murphy. We are the Ordinance Committee. Um, call the meeting to order, and uh, we would have public comment, but we have no public, so there would be no public comment today. Uh, so the first thing we have is a couple of public hearings. So I would accept a motion to open the public hearings. Move to open the public hearings. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. So the, um, the first issue is a zoning amendment to 350-2, 350-8.11, and 350-11.6, which mm -hmm. will define and specify bicycle, parking, and pedestrian standards. So if you all have your own edition of the ordinance, we'll let Carolyn walk us through it. And this has already been uh, dealt with by the planning board, correct? And transportation and parking. And transportation and parking. And did it go anywhere else? Presented. I think those are the oh, two. that was it? Okay, so um, the ordinance in front of you is, um, the, the impetus for it was to create more specificity about um, bike storage standards um, in, for Northampton as it relates to those projects that also that need site plan approval, typically from the planning board, but also add bike storage requirements um, for changes of some uses, um, whether or not they trigger site plan. And the reason, um, the main reason this is being introduced is that for several years, um, the planning board and applicants have just been negotiating how much bike storage is required when projects come forward. And um, inevitably there's a request, you know, how many, when we at a staff level talk to applicants, how many, they want to know how many parking spaces are required for or bike parking spaces are required. So um, this is an attempt to sort of put that all out on the book so everyone knows what the requirement's going to be and have sort of the level playing field for, for everyone. So um, the first part of it is to define bicycle parking. So in section two, it, um, there's the proposal is to add a bicycle parking definition um, that um, clarifies that we want the bike parking to be securely stored. It delineates the differences between short-term parking, which is just up to a few hours, as well as um, that would include bicycle racks that are fixed in place. Um, and allows by or allows bicycles to lean against the racks in an upright position with both wheels on a level surface um, and also long-term parking designed for um, obviously long-term parking overnight particularly in residential um, um, circumstances um, so multifamily and the like um, that would include bike lockers or protected bicycle storage under shelters or otherwise indoors. Um, the one in this definition, parking and transportation, added um, the words, I don't know if they're highlighted in your um, definition on your paper, but um, that under bicycle racks, a fixed in place stand which allows a bicycle to lean against in either an upright position in both wheels on a level surface or in a vertical position and then words with one wheel on a level surface or long term. So just adding slightly more tweaked detail of, of what it means to have um, approvable bike storage. May yeah. I interject? Um, my understanding is with one wheel on a level surface is actually deleted by the Transportation Parking Commission. Hey. Yeah, that was my, that was the motion. Um, oh my thing. gosh, do you know what? On all of this, the highlights have turned into additions instead of deletions. Okay. I think this will, might be better. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. You're right, I'm so sorry, yeah, thank yeah. you. But I noticed that over here too, so. Yeah, this might. I'm good now. Oh, you're awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have to Bill Gates, his work program is not working appropriately. <laughs> I'll write that on the memo. Right. Cash those checks first. <laughs> um, 
Um, so that's a deletion of that one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and then I don't know. Do you want me to read through the whole thing, or have you? Are you familiar with it? Should you know? Should I wait till council floor to read through the whole thing, or how do you want me to proceed? Because it's quite lengthy. I can certainly summarize it, or I can go line by line. Now, did it? What happened to transportation and parking? Is uh, what what concerns me is that somewhere in video land exists the detailed version of this, so if anybody wants to see it, they can. Yes. Um, did you go through it all the way and read the whole thing? Or? I'm not sure we read it aloud in transportation and parking. We did at planning board. Did it so it is in video land somewhere. Okay. So at least people can see it because right. then I mean because we're going to see it all again at council. So why don't you right. just go through and paraphrase it for us and we can read along with you uh, and if it was members of the public here I might feel differently about it but you know if they come here they may not want to also come to council but yeah. they will be back there so okay um, okay so then um, so the definition of parking then we jump to um, section 8 of the zoning ordinance which um, is all about parking <laughs> standards and also these other state not just bicycle parking but vehicle parking and loading so section 8 we would um, yeah, 8.11 um, already had um, some language about bicycle storage but not uh, nearly as detailed as what's uh, on the next what is on the next two pages so in section 8.11 um, this um, spelling out where and how much bicycle parking. So section eight is um, bicycle parking shall be provided for any new building, addition or enlargement of an existing building, except for in central business, um, for any change of use of the building. So if someone comes to the building, what that means is if someone comes down to the building part uh, as a zoning permit application and they're changing a use, it, then they would have to look at this table and sh and find out how many bicycle parking spaces they need to add that relates to the change of use. Mm -hmm. um, and it's similar to what we have for parking as well. Um, anytime there's a change of use, we recalculate the parking space requirements uh, for that use, except in the central business district and except in the GB district. But this doesn't accept the GB, it only accepts the central business district. And I noticed further on, relative to that, that that you can negotiate pooling spaces because obviously this is some wonderful standards, but they wouldn't fit central business at all because of the available space. I mean, right. even parking there is done communally, right. um, and a lot of it's public. So, what was your approach going to be in general in, in central business? Because those, you know, a lot of times it's all zero lot line, and nobody's got any space for anything. Right. So the idea. I, I mean, don't you, if you if you're going to cover this in a minute, I didn't mean to. Yeah, it goes further. It goes. The idea in central business was not to have it triggered at the time of the change of use, but if it were, if site plan was triggered, then we would look at central business. So if there's a new building, um, you know, half came in in central business. We required, as part of site plan, the planning board and the city required parking spaces. We didn't have a number then. But under that scenario, we would look to this table and say, okay, you're, you're creating um, 72 new units of residential. You need to provide 0.1 space per unit. So that would be the only time in central business that you'd be doing that. And then the alternative is that um, the office that either the Office of Planning and Sustainability um, can authorize a reduction in parking requirements when there are unique reasons why a new bicycle parking is not required, including the availability of adequate public bicycle parking space or um, uh, a payment in lieu of those spaces can be made. So um, when providing um, racks on public property or when providing um, racks on private property is a better option. So that's a staff level review that could occur in lieu of providing them on private property. Hey, because I, could be, I would be concerned, you know, you've got both parking and, and now bicycle standards, and if it's a zero lot line building and you're changing, you're doing something to it, right. um, but there is no space. I mean, right. it's all 
that right. every inch of the property is covered with buildings. It's kind of hard to. Right. Can I ask a sure, please. Um, following up on that, are there similar concerns in uh, Florence, a part of Florence zones, general business? They, or is it just well, you can't, more spread There's out? no zero lot line there. I mean, so you can't, you can't build over it like you can downtown, necessarily. It, well, there is zero lot line, um, but often the buildings are spread out more, um, and potentially you could... So for a change of use, but there could be a scenario, well, for instance, those buildings right along Main Street at the intersection of Main and Maple, for example, <clears throat> those are all, those uses are all well, zero lot lines. So I guess I, I, I don't necessarily mean zero lot line in the sense you can't cover the entire site necessarily like you can. I mean, you might have a building right up the lot line, yeah. but somewhere on that lot there's space because you can't cover the whole site. There are, right, there could be potential. I can see there are existing buildings that do cover all the lots, but it's not quite the same situation as downtown. Yeah. Um, but this allows for an out, essentially, if you can't provide it on your so That's the caveat to the table, to the entire table. So, um, and then, of course, instituting a table um, based on the type of uses um, and the number of spaces um, per use. So um, we sort of try to lump similar uses together, residential type uses, so residential, hotel, motel, bed and breakfast, point one space per dwelling unit or hotel room. And then 50% of those have to be long-term spaces. So what that means is because it's point one per space, it's really not gonna be triggered unless you have um, five units or more uh, multifamily, a multifamily structure of five units or more because we only we round up at half. So essentially single two, three, and four and would, at would point five a unit can never hit a hole. What's that? At point, point one or point, point one per, per unit. Point one a unit. Yeah. yeah, so you've got to at least get to point, point five to yeah. round. So. Right. Yeah. Um, and B&Bs, can they still only have three rooms? Yes. Yeah, so you wouldn't make it there either. Right. Yeah. Um, unless, uh, right, right. Um, so, and then the next category are a whole bunch of uses, um, sort of public assembly spaces, theaters, gyms, the YMCA's, libraries, museums. Um, one per thousand square feet of floor area. That has been merged, so if you look below that, the commercial, retail, and seasonal um, personal service and office hospital were added, were merged with that other category to be one space per thousand square feet. That's based on um, uh, that came out of the parking and transportation. Um, that we bumped up from half a space per thousand square feet to one, so then we just merged those categories. So basically, most of the commercial uses um, require one space per thousand square feet of um, floor area. And then manufacturing industrial treated differently, again, more like residential, 0.1 space per thousand square feet. Um, and then colleges, and K through 12 schools or classrooms and labs, um, five spaces per classroom. Oh, one, one, one per classroom. What's that? One space per classroom. No. Right. So that was an amendment. That was an amendment. From five. Yeah. Uh, oh, five. okay, okay. Because on my on my sheet it just says so I'm looking at an older. I'm looking at an older copy of this. Yes. So there were two amendments. One was bumping it up. To oh, actually, it's just not in this. And Which then. One that says TPC recommendations. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong Can one we just? Thing. I got duped into going to the first one I saw. Yeah, it's the second in. from the last document from the oh, oh, there it is. Well, I'll find it. You were tricked. You start off. Okay. <laughs> <There it is. laughs> yeah, walk out from it again. <laughs> Okay. So that got bumped up to oh, 
Uh, and this one does show the fixes, which is good. So Mr. Gates yeah. might be oh, off the hook. Oh, yeah, yeah, see, it shows that uh, W yeah. dies strike through. Yeah, the one wheel is changed in this one. I'm not trying to go Mm -hmm. um, when I went through the planning board, the planning board agreed five was good, so they sort of confirmed that and made a recommendation to move ahead with that. But they felt like trade schools and business schools or industrial schools are a little bit different because there's more of a, people may be coming from farther afield to go to those schools. So they, they recommended pulling that out of that category and keeping that, um, actually making that two per classroom instead of five. So now there's an extra line added for business, trade, or industrial school. So it's not treated the same as K through 12 or college. Um, and then no, u no new spaces for temporary uses. And um, sure. may I ask a question yeah. about the school? Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. No. Um, one question that came up in transportation parking is what is a classroom? Uh -huh. Just because you have, you know, the high school lots of rooms in it, you think you know what a classroom is, but I mean, is there, an, is there a known count of, of classrooms in your school? You can kind of, there's some flexibility there. Well, I think that's why it was said, you know, lab or other <laughs> teaching areas. So I think what it, it means is anytime you have a room where students will be convening for educational purposes, mm -hmm. um, that you know, would be considered educational okay, space classroom space. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, okay. And, I, you know, we, um, so, I, I, you know, it's funny, the planning board didn't really discuss that to figure out what it was. We've got a couple of, well, we have one member in particular who works at Smith and we're commenting that- Smith Polk? No, Smith oh, College, okay. I should say. Um, that there never seems to be enough bicycle parking in in campus situations or, or school situations. So she was comfortable with the five and that, that there does seem to be, you know, much more demand than what we have supplied of mm -hmm. bike storage. Um, so but they didn't get into sort of figuring out what that classroom is. Mm -hmm. okay. And it used to be worse because the support the students could have their cars if more of them had bicycles. <laughs> so there were more bikes there in, in the 70s than there are now because they couldn't have their cars parked. They couldn't bring their cars to school. Yeah. They're going to shift. Yeah. Um, so that's the table. And then below that is a section that deals with um, very specific standards for um, the area surrounding bicycle parking. So, you, um, so the, and, and the, the type of um, the type of the type of rack, how much space you need around it, um, where it can be in relation to the building, um, it has to be in front of the building, towards the street, it can be in the right of way if you get permission, it can be put in the right of way, but you have to have so much area around each slot so that people can easily pull their bike in and pull it out. It can easily be locked. Um, so it has to be a design that accepts you know, standard locks. So that's what, uh, that's essentially what um, C is all about. Um, and um, C, item C, number 12, the last one, parking transportation um, decided they didn't like the way bicycle ramp. So they wanted that struck as an option. But for the record I'll admit, I don't know what that is. Oh, you know what I'm To a wave. So um, that's what that is. Oh, okay. You know, the ones that go better. But it's not preferred. I guess I don't know why it's not preferred. I, I defer to my colleagues. I think it's because you have to lift, in some cases you have to lift your wheel over no. and it's not as um, it's not as easily, not as accessible as some of the other bikes. The preferred standard, I think, is like a baller with a loop. You can easily park two bikes on each side. The loop is right there. You can just roll your bike right up. You don't have to lift it. A baller. So you're healthy enough to ride the thing, oh. but you can't pick it up. What <laughs> happens when it falls over? It's like a motorcycle when it falls over. You get help. Whatever happened to you? 
You don't mind the wave? <laughs> I like the look of the wave. There are I like feet. the look of the wave too. I like it. Good on duty. I like sculpture <laughs> by breath. It has something else, some other. Can still Something that looks interesting that you can also pull the bike to. Yeah. But then how, can, a sign. But how would you? But how would you determine? So where, where we how many bikes you could bolt to the sculpture? I mean that that would be a whole new standard, wouldn't it? Mm. Well, no. So uh, the planning office um, could allow new or innovative technologies that provide equal or with greater convenience. Mm -hmm. Which number is that? Twelve. C twelve. Okay. Yeah. Is that after? Okay. I see. So I, when I, my question about that. So it says um, the preferred design. Um, inverted U. I see. So where where and where does that doesn't mean that the wave is prohibited, does it? I wouldn't think so. No. Well, it's just the they didn't want it's just it. no longer preferred. It's not a preferred ah, okay. okay. But okay. according to this standard, the classic in front of the grammar school in the sixties bike rack doesn't conform, right? Right. That's a lot. That's a oh, world yeah, moment. Right. Isn't there a historical <laughs> standard? <laughs> we could grandfather. I mean, you could. <laughs> What's high school? All the ones in front of the high school are like that. Well, the ones in front of the high school are really is really the wrought iron fence that separates the church from the school. <laughs> <laughs> what would you call that? Use. Trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call that. Yeah. Um. So. And that's so those are the specs for the parking spaces okay. and then um, so and then we go to the other piece of this um, ordinance which is all about more about pedestrians than bicyclists and it's sidewalk standards and a lot of it copy is, is really um, a standard that um, is used in site plan now informally and also there are sections for instance f2a mm -hmm. um and i'm sorry f2 mm -hmm. that um, additional um sentence up for f2 as well as f2a starts all projects um yes yeah, starting all projects and then going into paragraph a are already in the highway business standard for sidewalk construction and this just um takes that language and, and applies it to all projects that are triggered, that have triggered site plan review. So that we are again uh, making sure that um, we use the same standard across the board for site plan. So it's about um, sidewalk width and depth, um, ramps, sidewalk ramps, um, driveway um, access points over sidewalks, making sure they're reinforced whenever there's a driveway that's crossing a sidewalk, that that port panel of sidewalk is reinforced mm -hmm. to um, hold up under the weight of um, vehicular traffic. And um, and the standard spelling out for um, curb extensions at corner locations or mid-block where there's a crosswalk um, to make it safer for pedestrians crossing. And um, specificity about cross slopes for the sidewalks, which are basic engineering principles, but we just included them in the site plan section. And there were no changes out of planning or, or parking and transportation for that section. That's a question. Um, the complaint that I hear during the winter, of course, is snow being plowed onto people's sidewalks, and um, it's kind of inevitable, but one question I was asked by a resident recently is, is there a standard for the width of the tree belt? Yeah. Of, the, of the tree belt. Yeah, the, between the uh, sidewalk and the street. For right. new construction. For new construction. Right. Um, there is um, in residential subdivision, but the issue really is so it's seven feet for residential subdivisions, um, which is plenty wide to prevent right. um, snow plow snow from coming up on the sidewalk. Um, but a lot of streets don't have that, so we're never yeah. really going to see that right. for large portions of the city. And then in terms of commercial districts, 
uh, in the highway business district, we have much wider tree belt requirements in the highway, but like along King Street in the highway business district. What is it? Just out of curiosity. Um, it's 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And your sidewalks are five feet wide. So. Six feet six in the commercial mm -hmm. yeah. 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 district. So that's 16 feet of sidewalk and tree belt. Yeah. So, you know, there are some streets that have less than seven, but it's ample buffer, you know, five feet or four feet. Right. And then there are some streets where the sidewalks are right up on the street. There's nothing yeah. that can be done. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. and, and with Ned's new wind plow, <laughs> no one's safe. <laughs> that, that can, the snow goes 10 feet with that thing. Yeah. That's a fumbling device. And they use it with great glee. Mm -hmm. So, any more uh, questions on this one? Mm -hmm. So, what's your your pleasure? Do we want to, you know, because there's a, a lot of stuff here. Do we want to just send it along? Do we want to endorse it or just forward it without a recommendation and let it get hashed out? Because it, it probably should that get the council. That makes sense to then let, and then, because then Councillor O'Donnell could clarify all of the Stuff TPC that recommendations and all that. Sure, I'm, I'm yeah, because there's only three of us here. We don't want to. Yeah. I'll move we forward with without any rec without any recommendation. No prejudice, just no recommendation. You know, I have an inquiry first, though. Do we have to keep the hearing open? Oh, I'm sorry. Month. We still have the. <clears throat> Oh yeah, we would. Well, you can close the hearing on this item. On this okay. item. And keep. Uh, yeah, and we'll just keep going. Shall we do that first? With the other one, yeah. If, okay. we, if we're, uh, yeah, if we have a, if we on. have a plan as to how we're going to deal with it, then we can close the hearing on this one. Then I'll and wait, we now have a member of the public <laughs> who wasn't here earlier. Um, we'd accept your public comment on bicycles and pedestrian standards. Not necessary. But thank you for the offer. Okay. Then I'll you move to close the hearing on, on this. this particular item. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then to a recommendation? I'll move to send it to the uh, full council without any recommendation. As, as amended. As, as, as amended. amended. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can, can I ask a procedural question? I have the TPC recommendations. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have plannings. Is that right? I sent them to you. You did? Mm -hmm. Last week. Okay, so are Friday. they all incorporated into one document yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both the planning and TPC. The one I sent to you had them both. And, this, yeah. and, and the one that's the one going TPC, forward. did that include planning at that point or not? No, that no. okay. came first. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So now, in the so world of public I, I have one more question. How am I going to confirm that those changes are as you were expecting them to be since? Um, I can, I'll go look to see at my sent document to see if it incorporated. I printed it, and if for some reason it highlighted it not strike, not with strike through. But I'll just go and double check that. Okay, thank you. Because I, yeah. I, I don't want to send it to council and then have it be the well, one that. And these aren't on tomorrow. These aren't on tomorrow's I'm, I'm, anyways, I'm, I'm right? Put the fix on. These aren't it's tomorrow's anyway. So we got. In March, right? It's a March okay. meeting okay. where it'll come up. Yeah. So there's plenty of time to. Okay. Make sure that the right version actually mm -hmm. gets there. Right. Um, so this is a zoning amendment for 350.11.5B2G 11 and 11.6D and F3 site plan review criteria to incorporate the best management practices for stormwater and encourage the incorporation of green infrastructure technologies. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the, yeah, we just we didn't close the. We just closed right, that first, still open. so we're good. Um, so there are two sections under site plan. One is um, procedures and one is the approval process. So under 11.5, it's what we want to see for submissions when you apply for a site plan. And the idea is to add um, more clear language about what the standards have already been working up to be anyway, um, that we want to really encourage alternative um, um, stormwater management practices or best management practices um, during construction and also post-construction to manage stormwater. Um, and that for bigger projects, those over 5,000 square feet, 
is really primarily what we're talking about where this standard would apply, should incorporate uh, green infrastructure technology and low impact design to the extent feasible. So what that means is a way to handle the water on site and keep it on site as opposed to piping it and sending it directly off site. Um, and though now our standards and when DPW looks at stormwater management plans, we're always encouraging applicants to do that. It's not spelled out in the ordinance and so many times applicants just um, deal with stormwater the way they've historically been dealing with it or design for that um, without looking at better and new alternatives for dealing with that. So this language is really to say we want you to see um, that you have analyzed the options for um, addressing stormwater in what's termed to be green infrastructure um, through plantings and on-site containment. Um, and if you can't, then show us why you can't. Um, so that that becomes the default as opposed to building detention ponds and piping it elsewhere. So that's section five, and that major projects that do not trigger separate stormwater permitting shall have conditions that stipulate when inspections shall be completed and submitted to the city. Annual reports as necessary, depending on the stormwater system, shall be submitted to the city. And this is really to catch the gap between those projects that automatically trigger a separate stormwater permit under DPW and those that don't but, all, but do trigger stormwater review under site plan. So um, that's the, um, why we've added the language at the end of that paragraph of uh, D. Um, I'm sorry, of 116D. And then, so this is again under for approval process. Um, 11.6 F um, that as part of the approval criteria the planning board will look at this language to ensure that um, the added sentence that green infrastructure and low impact design is shall be incorporated to the extent feasible to ensure runoff is handled and at the very minimum up to one inch rainstorm um, shall be detained on site for an average of six hours so this is just catching up to the standards that's been in place for a long time. We haven't come back to amend the site plan language for probably 15 years. Um, so we need to change that from four to 10 inch storm. Um, and also the last um, edit relates to catch basins and the depth of those catch basins used to be the standard was three feet, now it's four feet. And where, where else did this go? Just it went to Public Works and Planning Board. Um, Public Works, I think the, they passed on voting on it. There was some confusion when it went there um, that perhaps this was premature. Of So they got into this whole conversation about um, the fact that EPA is, has been working on these new rules that would affect Northampton for a number of years. And they keep saying, we're gonna come out with new rules, we're gonna come out with new rules. And um, so I think they were a little confused that maybe this was putting the cart before the horse before EPA comes out with standards. The reality is this is very um, generic language, and so it's not creating any specific standards that might trump or might have to be amended once EPA comes out finally with the standards. So um, I believe I was told that the, the reason why they didn't come with a recommendation was that they thought that we should be waiting for EPA and were sort of misunderstood the intent of this. And um, really what this is doing is tweaking some of this um, specificity to come up to current standards like the three foot versus four foot um, catch basin stumps. Um, but also add language for best management practices, which is the current standard now anyway, under our DPW stormwater permit, as well as uh, Wetlands Protection Act um, stormwater permit. But that's that's the extent of where it's gone. Is there a, a definition for the term green infrastructure in our code? Yes. There is. Um, there is. In, it's actually, it's in our storm, uh, sorry, in our subdivision rules, we just added the definition of green infrastructure. Oh. Any more questions? No. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. 
moved to as a public comment. We have a lot to talk public tonight. So I move to close the public hearing. Second. On this one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, what's your pleasure? Same as the last one? Or? Um, uh, yeah. Send it without particular recommendation, move right. along, and I think Carolyn can come sell the deal in, in full council and get the big <laughs> treatment in with, with uh, PowerPoints and everything. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And those were the only ones that needed public hearing, right? I think we're, the next thing, I mean, we've got stormwater ordinance, we got bicycle, I don't know, those are those are documents supporting this. All right, so um, that was the complete closure of the public hearing. Thank you for stopping by, Carolyn. All right, uh, another call, last call for public comment. That's really disappointing, when you guys. Okay, this snow. Oh, you're here for snow, you're here for snow, okay. Then we'll, we'll let you defer your comment until <coughs> All right. um, Then we have minutes to approve. Now that Carol, we've got Carolyn on the way. Uh, second. No changes, no, we have good minutes. No to you, no to you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, did you do? Then the plastic bag. 14229, 14245. The many times amended. Can, can I just say that, that particular, those two particular ordinances have not yet been conserved by all committees? Mm -hmm. So, energy and sustainability. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. And that takes public care of that. Works committee of the DPW, I mean, uh, public yeah, works the new committee, committee of right. the City Council. City Council and the Board of Public Works Commission. Okay. I, I hope we um, continue, continue this uh, item. We don't even need to. We don't even need to move on. No, no, no. We just continue. Yeah, continue just it, yeah. it will live on. Been around for a while. All right. So that brings us up to. I uh, just a question. Question though: <coughs> are, are those the only two places that we know him? That energy sustainability, and then that new committee. Um, those are the only ones that that had yet to put them um, on their agendas. But um, they've all. They're all. They're. Every committee has them on their agenda now. I just need to get the. Um, do you know what information? Do you know which committees have taken this matter up already and have minutes? I. I do, and it, interestingly enough, neither of these committees will refer to the ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, we still one, like to see their, their discussion. One was the um, reuse committee. Mm -hmm. Who? Um, oh, you have you have copies of it? Yep. And, um, I don't have copies. I just have that one. Oh, I, I won't keep it then. Though. And but at then, some point we can get we can get these before we take it up. Yeah, and then um, the other one was the conservation commission, which gave it a positive recommendation. Those are the only other play, two places. Yeah, that have taken. Oh, that have already taken it up. That right. have, well, that have given me their feedback. Okay. Yeah. But as far as I know, it's really been referred everywhere, though. Yeah. Right? Yes. The one is going use. to make the rent. Right. Uh, so well sponsors are going to the youth commission meeting probably tonight, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to make it for tonight. Um, uh, the board of health took it up last. Last week, I think. Oh, they did. Oh, they, so they just haven't put out their minutes yet. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And Lou voted on. Yeah. And, and Lou already did. Yeah. So there's yeah. are there minutes then that are published yet for those? Well, uh, actually, the the um, copy of the um, Ed Lou recommendations are in here, but essentially they're removing the styrofoam. Okay. Well, the, the new version of the. Correct. Yeah. Right. The Ed Lou committee might have accepted the new version, but if that wasn't an amendment proposed by right. It wasn't? No, I mean, that was just the, the sponsors put in a new ordinance. Oh, the that sponsors, would, okay, rewrote or resubmitted something yeah, that, that okay. They included the removal of the, the phone maps. Okay, okay. Well, the, the sponsors are both part of the, uh, the committee. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. So but just the new to all commissions, right, and committees, not just that. Right? For informational purposes only. Okay. So there are two versions that live. Yes. <laughs> one includes the styrofoam and one does not. And so when so, it comes time, so the, so we'll have both to consider when it comes when they come to us. I think okay. one is withdrawn. That would be I, it, to know. It wouldn't have been. It would have had to go to council to do that, and it hasn't got to council to be withdrawn. Okay. Yeah, that's right. They would have to. So there, there may be an intent to do that at whatever time it comes to, to council. I, I'm told by the city solicitor because that one original one was out there with the styrofoam ban. I can send out these, you know, recommendations by other mm -hmm. committees, like Ed Lou sent the one with the no styrofoam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for informational purposes. And if your it's at your, mm -hmm. you know, the committee's um, perusal to do what they want with it. So. It'll just be helpful when it comes time for us to take it up that we have the, you know, whatever the oh. discussion, the whatever minutes are available. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll try to put it in some sort of readable format for you at the table or amazing. something. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't asking for that, but that's <laughs> over and above. I'm Thank a visual you. person, so. Thank <laughs> you. Can I have graphs and charts, pictures and yeah. arrows? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, um, absolutely. So we're looking, we got the ordinance regarding bicycles and pedestrian facilities. That's part of what we did already. That's not a new thing. New thing. Which? No, it's ordinance. not. It's all, it's just, that was part of that. It's all part of that. So, <clears throat> and the stormwater flood control utility. All right, we done, we done. And that, so we're up to, from what I can tell, the, um, Fourteen three three three. We didn't do the bad storm one. We didn't do which one? Best management practices. You didn't do the one with the fee, the stormwater fee. Item fourteen three three three. Yeah. Did not. Right. Oh, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's where we. Are. That's where I think we are, and you think we're there too. So. Oh yeah. Right. How about you? Just you if you could just give me a number. Oh, oh, I see. We're back <coughs> here. I see. In, in yeah, number done. four, we're in item number four on our agenda. It, yeah. Is that is that right? On, on, on our agenda, item number four. Oh, that, well, that was the. Uh, yeah, we did the, this, 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 this. This is one. This bolded one here that says yeah. four point one. Four point three three, which is also. Which is also fourteen point three three. Four three three three. So okay, we really are at the same place, okay. even though we're on um, different yeah. pages. Can I? Can I just? I mean, this this new program that I'm still tinkering with doesn't really doesn't um, remember. Um, organize these in a readable fashion. So as I get a chance, I'm going through and trying to reorganize them. But all that, what you're reading, number four, is actually the public hearing. Yeah. So where we are is actually number, number seven. Um, Seven one. Point seven seven Roman point then the red, uh, then it's the stormwater the condos are followed by Roman numerals. So is it yeah. Roman so numerals? So stormwater three? condos. It's sto right. is where we're stormwater. Uh, excuse me, seven point. Which Roman four. numeral? Four. Okay. Yeah, four. Thank you. Which is condos. Stor stormwater flood control utility. Okay. It's still the same one. Yeah. Fourteen point three three. But this is the the distribution. Um, there's one more one. Do you want a motion first? Or sure. Start yeah. Start? We'll well, get that going. Um, I, I just move a, approval of, of the positive recommendation. Of the positive the recommendation. And this was amended by Public Works. The Public Works Committee of the City Council, not to be conversed with the Department of Public Works. Right. And um, is it gone anywhere else or are we are we yet? Nope. I think we're it. Well, uh, yes, that's it. Other than the city council committee. All right. So just let me. You want a second? I'll second. Fine. You got a second. Okay, let me actually find it. Uh, did you 
Yeah, I was looking Property at Property Association. Okay. 6.333. Yeah. There it is. So in it terms is. of our documents, is it, is it, does it actually, is it the one that says, upon the recommendation of Councilor O'Donnell Inspector? Yeah, this, this one here. Okay. Yeah. So. Is there something on here that says 14.333 or am I just missing it? That's actually the one that was recommended <laughs> by, um, you'll see there are two versions of it on the agenda. Okay. That's the one that came back from DPW. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the okay. one that they sent back. The and this is the one. Tonight. And this is the one that got a positive recommendation from the Council Committee on Public Works. Correct. Correct. I see. Okay, so now we've figured out the and there's nothing home. on it that says 14.333. Okay. But we figured out how to read the agenda, Thank and you. we've actually found the ordinance <laughs> we're talking about. So that's a yes. very positive step. Huh? Yes. Okay. And I, uh, I just I just wanted to state though that I don't think that that was their recommendation. I believe they came back with no recommendation. Just moved it on and. Okay. I. Um, I see you're one of the right. sponsors of this, so That's why don't we right. let you explain? Yeah, why don't I? Because you, you're one of the uh, rep, the sponsors of this, so we'll let you walk us through. Okay, it. thank you. Um, and I'll get to what the council committee on the public works did in a second. But first, in general, I, to my surprise, the biggest complaint I got about stormwater was not the fact of the stormwater utility, but from condo um, owners who were concerned because they were getting bills that were determined by taking the total bill for the condo building and dividing it by the number of units, regardless of the percentage of common ownership. That they had correct. in the master deed. In the master deed. And so they said, can you can we change this so that if I pay 25% of my water bill, the stormwater matches. So that's the purpose of this. Um, when it went to the Committee on Public Works, Two amendments were added, um, and the reason why I think it, it did get a positive recommendation is because they amended their names at the top. So now it's upon the recommendation of me and the Public Works Committee of the City Council. Councilor Spector was turned into the Public Works what? Committee of the City Council. Uh, okay, so is this the chair? Oh, I see. So there wasn't it wasn't a it's, we're, we're not to read anything into, his into the there. strike through. So this is an easy lame doc, and we're. Rewriting about a history or something like if that. If anything, it's, it's an elevation since he's the chair of the. Oh, okay. Oh, excellent. Okay. Now, like him, I think, generally. Yeah. He's a good guy. That was his. Uh, that was yeah. his suggestion, I believe. Um, and and so you and you're saying that it came with a positive recommendation from that committee. That's my recommendation. I mean, uh, your, your recollection, recollection about the recommendation. Yeah. But at, at any rate, they've had their way with it, so we can act on it. Right. And regardless, and, and, and they're the only other ones that wanted to weigh in on it. Well, if I might, then um, just because I understand this just from my uh, similar to Councilor O'Donnell, I have a lot of condo uh, developments in. Ward one, and I've heard uh, even from one association that wanted a meeting with uh, DPW to talk about that very issue. And um, at that time, uh, Jim Laurela and um, uh, McDonald, Doug uh, McDonald said that uh, Councillor O'Donnell was working on this with uh, with this. Uh, they were working together. So this is the. It sounds like this is the result of that working together with the department to come up with a good yes. solution. Yes. Okay. Now, do you want to go on to section two? Because you, you explained okay. section one, but. Yeah, I mean, actually, I kind of, my explanation straddled both sections. Section one merely creates a new definition, definition. for the property association. Okay. Section two is where the action happens. I'll just read it out loud. That would be mm -hmm. the easiest way to explain it. <clears throat> and I'll start with the second bullet. Property associations may submit to the Department of Public Works a copy of the instrument recorded in the Hampshire Registry of Deeds or Hampshire Land Court that defines the percentage of common ownership attributable to each unit thereof. Upon receipt of a copy of such instrument, the department shall cause each individual owner to be billed separately for the percentage of attributable to such unit. Mm -hmm. um, now, the, uh, Mr. Larla, in, in the Council Committee on Public Works, added J which reads for uh, bills for residential, commercial, and multi-use condominium properties shall be determined by dividing the total hydraulic acreage for the parcel equally by the total number of condominium property owners.
difference. In other words, that would codify their current practice. So However, the city, the city solicitor recommends we strike that mm -hmm. because it's problematic for... It seems overly simplistic for such a wonderful engineer as Mr. Lorelin to have come up with that. Sometimes the simple solutions are the most elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's what he was thinking. But yeah. I don't know how, it, it, I think it's questionable for other reasons. So the solicitor recommends we get rid of it. Okay, so we would move forward with K only? Yes. So, but isn't J what they default to now? As a matter of policy. policy. And it will be what they, I presume, what they will continue to default to. Until, so we're just going to take yeah. it out of the ordinance. Right. And the ordinance will simply give an association the right to send along their master deed with the percentages and say, use this. Yeah, the, the bigger issue is whether, I think the solicitor, solicitor would rather have property associations built as an association. And let them you guys it figure it out. Yeah. Um, the DPW has logistical concerns with that. Um, the other option would be to get master deed percentages from everybody which would be more difficult. Well, they're publicly available. I mean, you can just, they're all at the Registry of Deeds. You could just. They are, but do we want to have the Department of Public Works go and research and pull all that paper? And, uh, so that's the conflict. And so the solution that we came up with is have it only win. If uh, they care enough to send it in. It, that's, yeah, so that's what okay. It is. Yeah, because it would, I mean, I can understand, you know, when, if DPW, I'm surprised they weren't doing that anyways, because if they build the association, they will get paid. And the association would have to collect from condominium owners who didn't pay the condo fees. You know, because the association will simply put it in the condo fee and the unit owner has to pay the condo fee. So it would it would be a I mean that's a much more uh, you know, I kind of agree with that one because then you know the fee will get paid by the association and it sort of defers collection to the association for the one for the condo owners that just don't pay the bill. But I'm going to apologize just because I'm going to, so I'll let you guys take this vote since it's not ready. All right, do you have an to, opinion on this one before you? I, I would go, I, I mean, if I, it hasn't been, has it been moved to send with a positive recommendation? Uh, yeah, I think you second it. Yeah, right, that's right. So I, that's what I would vote, oh, okay. but I think we're not, that's consistent. You, you guys are still having your conversation okay. about okay. it, so come yeah, on. You can find out what we did later. Go watch the home version. Okay. Yeah, we did. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you can't put a lien on a, on a condo association. Mm -hmm. That's that's. You know, so if you want to collect them, you have to take the association to court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but typically, typically they, you know, they pay. So I, yeah, it's okay. So, what's your recommendation with Mr. Laurel's? codification of what they're doing now. Uh, I agree with the solicitor that we should just not codify the practice. So we'll define condos, cooperatives, and other association forms of ownership. And then we'll give them the opportunity to submit it. Right. But we're not going to refer to what DPW is doing already. They, they essentially the ordinance will merely offer them this option right. if they choose to exercise it but in the meantime DPW can do whatever they want there are, maybe there are associations for which the current practice is fine and they but yeah, if they have a problem with it they can ask you can ask under yeah. this ordinance yeah. so oh do you want to send it forward as it is because her her motion didn't say that well, we were striking this portion did it? can we just have a new motion be yeah, because we can't amend it because the maker's gone. We can vote this down and then, I don't know, that's whatever you want. Perfect. That's a good way to do it. So vote this down. All, all in favor of <laughs> Councillor, uh, Councillor, uh, she's already gone. I forgot Councillor. <laughs> I forgot her name. Your name already. Uh, we'll just vote that one down and then you can Working make it. Working I withdraw because it was my motion. Uh, was it, did you second it or make no, it? No, I made the motion. No, let's just vote it down because she's not here okay. to agree with your <laughs> moving oh, okay. it. So, all in favor of it as moved? I vote no. And I vote no too. Okay. You I'm have another motion? Personally, I, I move <laughs> approval of this ordinance, positive recommendation of this ordinance, striking. as amended, striking J and making K the new J. But with 
also the sponsorship. Hey, with, the, with the definition and the sponsorship. So we're canning this one totally. No, no. We're just taking out J. But that's just this is the original one. Essentially, we're using the original one. Yeah, you're right. We're, we're using the original one, but we're putting the Public Works Committee to City Council at the top. Okay, so uh, so okay, so you're just doing the sponsors. That's true. The actual ordinance we have is not this one, but, but this one. So my motion should be understood to mean that we are approving this, but but with the amended sponsorship. Amended sponsorship and removing J. Yeah, although I, it depends. <laughs> I haven't seconded it yet, so you're still, you have a blank slate here, so you can. You have okay. Well then, the item that, that I think was referred to us is this one, which is the. Which um, only had J. Which only had J. Totally unamended. All right. So my motion is to send this forward with a positive recommendation. Amending, amending the sponsor, which is this, to read upon the recommendation of councilors Ryan R. O'Donnell and the Public Works Committee and City Council. And, and then it. removing that J and inserting this, but this J, J. This J is done in here. So we don't, don't need to remove it. Oh, is that the. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So that. Okay. So we're just changing the sponsors on the top. So procedurally, Correct. when I. When I um, handle this back to City Council. I'm going to put the DPW committee's recommendations, recommendations back to City Council and this one back to City Council and no. let them decide? I would suggest we just send back the original unamended one that the DPW committee didn't look at. Or did look at but and simply amend, amend the sponsorship. Simply amend the sponsorship. And then I will explain how the committee on public works did review it. And we didn't go along with that. And we didn't accept. Well, the, but they were referred the, the, the item from council. Correct. So, so their recommendation has to come back to council, does it not? Well, they, you certainly can talk about what they did, but this committee, you know, we, what we sent back, we were also, yeah, we changed it and come up for that. And we were both referred the same thing. Yeah. Yes. Except they changed it and we're changing it. They class. make recommendation on it and we <laughs> and said, we said no, no thank you. Except we'll take your name and put it at the top. We'll add your name yes. and then reject your recommendation. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, then. So is that motion clear? So that ordinance. Yes. With the amended. <clears throat> sponsorship. Sponsorship. That's what I'm seconding. Excellent. Yeah. That took a long time to get there, didn't it? All right. Is there any more discussion on that confusion? No? No? All in favor? Aye. Okay. There goes that. Still no comment? Okay. Well done, though. Oh, that was fun you. to watch. We do make interesting TV here at Oregon, so we. Uh, okay. So that's done. So now. These are all your areas of expertise here. We're doing more parking stuff now. Okay. So the next one is, um, but I thought some some of this stuff looks vaguely familiar. Yeah. Repeal parking prohibited all times on a section of New South Street. Didn't we do that already? I think we thought we did at the last meeting, but it was determined we did not, and so uh -huh. it came back to us. Okay. Okay. Well, so is this the one that re was replaced by another one? Well, this is this is no, that's that's Middle Street. Yeah, Middle no, yeah Middle Street. That won't ever go. Um, well, it, is this this is the one where we're putting the parking back? So the crosswalk was went away. Right South Street. Yeah. Yeah, we moved the crosswalk, so we're taking that no parking area and we're putting the parking back there. Right. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Transportation parking did review this and gave it a positive rating. And so that's where it went. So this is 312-102. And this is it, correct? Correct. Uh, this is it. That's correct. Okay. And this puts, for the folks at home, this takes where the crosswalk was and authorizes the parking meters to go back. So right. those two free spaces are going away. Because people have been parking there. Uh, so in, in the crosswalk? 
know where the crosswalk was. Oh, okay. Which actually is a good thing because it stops people from trying to use the old crosswalk right, exactly. and getting run over. All right, so do you want to make a motion on this one? So let, let, me, let me just make sure I understand this because I have to put this in the notes here. Um, parking, parking prohibited at all times is being deleted. So now we're allowing parking. Yep. Okay. So I would move a positive recommendation. And I will second that. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. we're good with that. And I think we're up to where our public may want to comment, because we're up to. We're done with that. So I think we're up to snow and ice. Yes. Okay, we agree on that. You know, we're going to have to get a merit badge for figuring out these new agendas. Um, so I'm going to read this one because I think, where else did this go? This went to transportation? No, it hasn't gone anywhere. Just here? Just us. Just for us? And then, of course, this should be a top top of the council. So I'm going to read this for our member of the public who I think this is what she said she's here for. Yeah, okay. Da, 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 da. So this is <coughs> revising section 285-17 of the code providing for snow and ice on sidewalks removal by owner or occupant uh, and required city removal. And let me get down to the good stuff here. This is A, the owner responsible for a building structure or lot of land bordering on any street, lane, court, square, or public place within the city where there is a sidewalk, including any curb ramp cut, shall, after snow has ceased to fall, whereupon or wherever snow shall have collected or deposited upon any such sidewalk within 24 hours, remove the same or cause the same to be removed from such sidewalk and also remove or cause to be removed from such sidewalk or cover, uh, let's see, or cover, cause to be covered with sand or some other suitable substance within 24 hours after it has formed or appeared any ice which, with which the same may be encumbered. This is very clear, isn't it? Being encumbered, Some, a lawyer must have done this. <laughs> encumbered in such way as to render such sidewalk safe and convenient for travel to the full width. If a person is found to be violating the provisions of this section, it shall be the duty of the chief of police or his or her designee, the director of public works or his or her designee, or parking enforcement officers to assess a fine to such person in accordance with the fine schedule set forth in Chapter 40 entitled Non-Criminal Enforcement. Each 24-hour period, um, a violation of subsection A or B exists shall be considered to constitute a separate offense and there, therefore for folks at home you can be fined again. Uh, no person shall place, deposit, or move ice or snow onto the paved surface of a street or into a gravel shoulder area if any, so you can't shovel the snow back into the street. Upon the neglect of or violation of the duties imposed by the provision of subsections A or B of 225.17. Such duties may be performed by the Director of Public Works or his designee at the expense of the person or entities liable <coughs> to perform those duties. Assessments of cost under this subsection shall not preclude any party from being fined under 40-5. Okay. Now, can we induce public comment? <laughs> um, I think this is great. Uh, uh, well, please, Julie Sharap. For, first, yeah, you can, why don't you like kind of face that way because we're doing this for the folks Julie at home. Julie Sharap, um, 135 State Street. Um, I think this is great because um, some of this time of year I get many, many, many complaints um, that sidewalks are not shoveled and Many of my constituents walk to town. It's one of the great things about my ward. 
Um, some don't have cars, and so they're only mode of transportation. Some are disabled. Um, many have to transport small children with strollers. And there, there are people who own buildings who just don't shovel. And there's been little recourse for that. So um, I think this is great. And uh, are we going to read? We're going to read the fines. Is that right? That's the next. Um, do, 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 that is accompanying this. Uh, whoops, that's in the street. Uh, and here, here it is. All right, this is in your uh, Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled as follows that Section 40 5 of the Court Norm Ordinance of the City of Northampton shall be amended. Uh, so that su such sections shall read as follows. Uh, it gives enforcing officers, which existed in the ordinance as I read it, uh, public works, director or his designates, police department or parking enforcement, and they're in the ordinance. First violation, 50. Second violation, 100. And third violation, $250. So and you could get the $400 really quick. Mm -hmm. um, and, to the, and that would be three consecutive yeah, days. Right? Yeah, because you'd have to get 24 hours to get rid of it. And then if it happens again. So now is that for each snowfall or is that per building? So if that you have was, a snowfall and it's three consecutive days, you get to that amount. Yeah, for that each. Violation. So or is mean, it that at one building they've been caught, it's been. So let's let me read the confusing text again so we can try and figure that out. Just a small amount of dollars uh, in text, the less sentence. Well, yeah, each 24 hour period a violation of subsection A or B exists, it shall be considered to constitute a separate offense. So every day. So let me read the front part. Within 24 hours, you have to remove the same, which is the snow and ice. So within 24 hours, you have to remove the snow and ice uh, to, 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 from the sidewalk and also. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, and also cover it with sand or rice melt or something. So you have to clear it, right. and then if it needs it, <coughs> treat it. Well, as I read it, it's separate things. Even it's it's snow removal, but it's also ice removal. So let's say it rained and yeah. there was yeah. ice that formed. So it you know, if you shovel it and you find ice, you have to right. treat it. If you shovel it and find pavement, you don't. Right. But and then subsequently, if the clear pavement gets icy, you need to treat it within 24 hours of it appearing. And every 24 hour period after that, you don't do it, constitute a new fine. Okay. So it's 50 okay. bucks the first day, and $100 the next day, so you have to 150. And then the third day, it's $250, mm -hmm. so you have to 400 bucks. So what happens after the third day? Um, it doesn't say, because it doesn't say each consecutive day, does it? And when does the DPW come and just do it? do it and then charge them for it. I guess. On neglect of, or violation to do to do uh, such duties may be, perf may be performed by the director of public works or his designees at the expense of the person. So it doesn't say when, it says it may be done, but it doesn't say when. Right. So that's an up in the air kind of thing. Uh, so yes, the, they may do it. Now my feeling is that they probably would get somebody under contract to do it because they probably don't want to be sending their own crews out during snow emergencies to clear people's sidewalks. So they probably would hire somebody to do that. Um, but, uh, and I think what the difference, because we have an ordinance like this now, but it's not, I don't think it talks about treating out, treating it. I think it just talks about clearing it. I think it does talk about treating it. Does it talk about treating it? We don't have that here to, right, to refer just to. Replacing it. Is your question, Counselor, whether after you get to say the fourth violation, how long that holds for? Right. Well, what I mean, there are sidewalks that have been unshoveled for, right. you know, weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, right. So obviously that's done past the third day. So what happens after the third day or the third violation? And so it should say third or subsequent. Subsequent. Yeah. And so. So that it two, so th every day after happened. that would be two fifty. Yeah. Which for most sidewalks you could get shoveled for that. And my question would be: Should we say subsequent violations in that calendar year? 
said that next year, well, oh, you're back to 50. Or was that just assumed? I think that's just assumed that. Well, that was sort of my other question. Mm -hmm. Is this based like per yeah. snow event, like per residence or per building and snow event, mm -hmm. or yeah, I think because and, and if you the cost ultimately over again, or? if you ultimately clear it, you know, let's say you get fined mm -hmm. fifty right. bucks and you get your little self out there and you shovel it and you take care of it. Right. And then three days later it snows again. I think you're back to 50. Yeah, I think it's per incident right, right. would be my understanding of it. So, if, you know, if they have to find you 50 bucks and that makes you go shovel it and then a week later it snows again and, and you don't do it, you're back to 50. I think it's each occurrence right. until you behave. So. I'm, not, I'm not sure I agree with that, actually. I would think that um, it's a violation of the of the provision mm -hmm. and it's not necessarily a violation per snowstorm so in a particular mm -hmm. year if you violate this part of the code three times even if it's over a three-month period i would think you're still getting hit with 250 dollars for the third time mm -hmm. that's what i would think and because the goal is to i'm sorry you have what can't pass over th here th this is just what's on the books right now oh okay yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um that would be my reading mm -hmm feel like any other fine. One thing this does, which is an improvement of, over the existing ordinance, the existing ordinance requires that we go to court about it. <laughs> and so this is much better because it's just making it a non-criminal offense that you can give out a ticket for. Mm -hmm. And it opens up the, the possibility of who could get that ticket. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's expanded. Because right now the police do it, but you know, if it's within right. the turf of the parking enforcement people, they could do it. And which is why, part of the reason why it doesn't always happen is obviously they have other things that so if there are more people right. that can give that can um, get out these violations, mm -hmm. that would be good. Yeah. So just to go back to what you were saying, Councilor Donald. So so if someone has violated in in one year, if someone has violated this three times, then on the fourth time, no matter where in the winter that this has happened, they would still get that two hundred fifty dollar fine again. That would be my understanding. We might want to add in that subsequent events in that calendar year uh, or something or within six months yeah we may want to uh, we may want to clarify i mean i think <coughs> the we've got to we want to clarify it someplace uh as to when it resets you know if it's if it if it resets at every snow event mm -hmm. so the first time it takes two fines and it's all set and then it snows again you know, if you start back at 50, I think that would be something we want to clarify. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, this, this isn't showing up until March, so we certainly have time to ask the solicitor's opinion about... When the winter's over. Right. It's yeah. Been... Yeah, when the winter's over. Um, well, well by... I don't know. The snow in front of my house is going to be there in March. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By way of illustration... So much. By way of illustration, the plastic bag ordinance puts another row in the table of non-criminal dispositions. Mm -hmm. And first offense is $50, then it's a second and subsequent offense is $100 each occurrence. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't interpret that as, you interpret that as each time the Board of Health or whoever inspects you and you have plastic bags and you get fined, you wouldn't interpret it um, that you, you know, per inspection. I guess, and what I mean is, you would do the same thing with snow the snow, you wouldn't do it per storm, it would just be mm -hmm. going on and on. But I think that does need clarification. But for the plastic bag, that's not, it doesn't reset in a calendar year, right? This, that's we're, right. We're just right. imagining this would reset in a calendar year because it's yeah. that would make seasonally sense. Because related. Because theoretically, if you purge plastic bags and then go, well, okay, they won't be back for a while, I'll buy some more. Right. You know, in this instance, you clear your snow and you really don't want any more snow. It isn't a conscious effort to bring the snow, it just shows up on its own. You know, if you were back into your store and, and the plastic bag fairy had re-delivered them, you know, and you hadn't asked them to, you know, it's a little different. There's there's that there's an act of commission in restocking yourself with plastic bags. Or if the plastic bag fairy doesn't have a permit to deliver plastic but, bags. Yeah, you would get that fine it too, but for or her. Sorry. Yeah. But in the case of snow, I don't I don't think anybody wants it on their sidewalk, so it would come back without commission on the part of the property owner, mm. which is why I think it would reset, because once you've made your peace and paid your fine and cleared your sidewalk, you have a clean slate for the next storm, 
because what we want to do is just we oh. want people to do their sidewalks. So, you know, if you after you got a slap on the wrist and a fifty dollar fine, dutifully do your sidewalk all the time, you know. Why should you then get that? Why should you then idea? get whacked? I mean, but, uh, but you, that would that would put more an onus on enforcement mm -hmm. to keep going. Like no one would ever get a, a, a third violation, two hundred fifty dollar ticket, unless the DPW or parking enforcement or police went back to the same place over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that's ideal. I think you should be able to get a third violation fine over a period of three months. Just but, so but that's even more to for them to remember. Not only they went back there, but how many times. I mean, that's even harder to remember. Well, I don't know what their, their mechanism is. Whenever I've talked to the police, chief of police and transportation I'm talking about repeat offenses, he tells me they have a database and yeah. it's not hard. Yeah. But now we have three entities having to share the database. You know, the DPW is going to know if they're writing a ticket or, you know. I think it would be harder to determine when a, when a fine period starts and ends. Well, it ends when you For shovel your dams. <laughs> yeah, or DPW does. Then those three entities have to know yeah. that that uh, was yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. I think it should just be per calendar year myself. That would be my suggestion. Oh. Well, we'd have to clarify it for them. You know, and I think people have enough interest in this. You know, I think we should move it along with the recommendation that that occur at, you know, at council, because I think people want to, the council want to talk about this before the snow goes away. Okay. But we, you know. Um, yes, just an observation. If you compare this to um, something like a false alarm fee, mm -hmm. you know, a false alarm fee adds up so that every, you can get a false alarm fee three times in one day. Every time the police come out to check on it, it's considered an occurrence. Mm -hmm. So if neighbor A complains and then neighbor B complains and it happens to be on two different police shifts, how does that work <clears throat> for, you know, it getting issued a citation type of thing? I mean, people are going to want to have some sort of, you know. Yeah. There's a downward floor in this established in the first paragraph, which is each 24-hour period um, shall be a separate offense. So you couldn't get it on the same day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to give them, you know, it's like our old days with uh, potholes. You had to give DPW a reasonable amount of time to react to notice to clear it. Yeah. And I think one of the things that would may well enter into do you find someone or don't you find someone is, you know, they do the clear their sidewalk. But they go away for the weekend. And they don't have anybody hired to clear their sidewalk because they always clear the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You know, when they get back and they're gonna clear their sidewalk, but twenty four hours has elapsed. I mean I mean I guess it it depends on who is who's reporting this, right? So I mean you would presume that your neighbors would know that you usually do this well and they wouldn't report you. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. but you know, maybe Maybe traffic, you know, um, mm -hmm. parking enforcement will be driving around and all okay. things. Like that. Well, usually, I mean, things like this usually need a complaint, mm -hmm. you know, right. except for alarms because the alarm company calls the police, you know, so they they know about it. And there's no method for appeal in here, right? I well, think every like, non-criminal yeah. fine is going to have the same method, which. I couldn't explain to you, <laughs> but well, it's being put in the same table. So it's anything we do, you can take the district court just about. You know, it's going to always go that route. Uh, but no, that would be. Um, I certainly don't mind moving this along because I think people want to talk about it, and it came from the mayor because obviously they collect uh, the phone calls on this stuff most of the time. Can I can I describe mm -hmm. a couple of amendments that actually? I Worked out with the mayor. Oh, well, and, sure. I mean, if um, you're holding out on us. No. Mm -hmm. um, because actually. Um, but this, this didn't go to transportation, right? No. no. Okay. Um, but the mayor's been involved, but other councilors have been involved um, as well. And so I actually originally thought it might be good to have more of a, a clear forgiveness policy. Um, I thought it could kind of be like Obamacare for sidewalks. You, know, you get fined, 
but your fine is forgiven if you enter into a contract with someone to clear your sidewalks from now on. Yeah. You know, to kind of create an incentive to have people create permanent arrangements rather than just buying them year in year out. That didn't seem to that wasn't that didn't survive. Um, is there a provision to get someone else to pay to clear your sidewalk? Is there a provision to get someone else to do it? Those are I digress. Okay. Um, anyway, that's that's something. But, you have this but I, the oh yeah, yeah, this is a print out. May I ask? So you would you would like show a contract that you have with a snow removal company or something like that? Right, and then the concern actually from the mayor was that that was too administratively complicated, mm -hmm. and I could really see that at that point. No, we um, have had court cases where people have gone to court saying, you know, Your Honor, they're after me, but I paid a contracting company to assume this responsibility for me. Yeah. So if there is negligence here, it is not mine, it is my snow removal companies. Well, on that point, I, I would like to point out that one of the great improvements of this ordinance is that the responsibility definitely rests with the property owner. Mm -hmm. The current language, I forgot what it says, it says the owner or caretaker or resident at the time. So I, you know, I have somebody who calls me every year, always confused about whether his tenant is responsible or he is. Ultimately, I think the owner is, but this yeah. does. And that's what the court said. They said, yeah. you know, you, you can hire a contractor, but supervision of that contractor is your responsibility. Yeah. So you can have them do it, but if they don't do it to satisfy the code, you need to call them back and tell them to come back and do it right. You know that you're not. You, you can't escape liability by hiring somebody because they're ultimately acting as your agent and you need to supervise them. Or you can put it in a lease and say that your tenant's responsible for it, but, mm -hmm. but still, at the end yeah. of the day, yeah. you need to yeah. make sure exactly. that it's done. Um, but one, one amendment I would like to propose is, um, is, is the following. There's a difference between downtown and residential parts of the city. I think the standards are different. And a lot of this comes about because downtown business owners after the, the dissolution of the bid, are worried because, you know, as they should be, that the sidewalks are not going to get plowed, uh, shoveled. So, I would like to propose an amendment that makes a distinction between downtown and residential parts of the city. And I'll say up front that the, the mayor and the solicitor have seen this amendment and are, are fine. So, right in the middle of that giant, confusing paragraph. Um, we essentially, we add, well, after the phrase, such sidewalk safe and convenient for travel to the full width. Period. Period. At that point, we add, <clears throat> for property located in the central business district or in areas of Florence zoned general business, as deline delineated on the Northampton zoning map, the above requirements must be met within 24 hours or by 8 a.m. on the next business day, whichever is sooner. So in other words, downtown, there's a slightly higher standard now because we want the streets to be cleared by 8 a.m. Um, on, on business days. Um, I did run this by a couple business owners downtown. I haven't run it by every business owner downtown, but there seemed to be support for that. Mm -hmm. And this is with re without regard to whether the storm has stopped. Because the 24 hours is after the end of the storm. Right. After the end of the at, at 24 hours after the end of the storm, it must be done. Or after the end of the storm by 8 a.m. After the end of the storm. So in other words, if the storm ends at 7 a.m. on Monday, mm -hmm. the whole city has until 7 a.m. on Tuesday to clean it. But Central Business has now an hour until 8 a.m. So. so yeah. That's, that's and and general about. business does as well. <clears throat> Correct. Well, central business downtown, and then Florence, kind of Main Street Florence, general business. So that was the goal. Um, and it's supported by the mayor, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And then Amendment 2, wasn't that not in there? Amendment two pertains to the uh, yeah. the other ordinance yeah. that but sets the. That's fees. the same people who are on here already. But. Yeah, it's just a rephrasing. 
Uh, right now, it says Department of Public Works Director or his or her designee, Police Parking Enforcement. And I think it should say Department of Public Works Director or his or her designee, Chief, Chief of Police or his or her designee, or Parking Enforcement Officer. Mm -hmm. Just for consistency. That's more of a style of So, those are. Is those there are any public opinion. comment on that from someone who will see it again? I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, so you move that amendment, right? Yeah. Can I move an amendment for to affect both or different ordinances? Or do you want two separate? Motions? No. I mean, you're, you're going to move amendment one for the ordinance itself, and amendment two for the list of enforcing. Yeah. And penalty. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll second both those. Thank you. Well, since they're interrelated and connected, I don't think we're doing anything wrong doing them both at the same time. Because we've taken them as a group, right. presumably. Yes. Okay. So uh, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. OK, so now it's in there. Um, the other thing that I would like to clarify is the um, the violation thing and answer that question. Is it third and subsequent violations or do we want to amend it so as have it be first violation, second violation in the same event and third violation and subsequent of violations within the same event or do we I mean that would be a way to clarify it. Does it? Do you all do you always stay at your 250 bucks after they've hit you three times, no matter which storm we're talking about, or do we want to specify in in the penalties that it would be for the same snow event? I just think you have trouble defining a snow event, and practically speaking, during a snow event, I don't see any of the enforcing officers giving out three tickets to anybody. Maybe in one or two cases. Well, so a case that I heard a lot about because I have a for sale sign in front of it was the Northampton Nursing Home Building. Uh -huh. Because that owner, I think, finally did clear it. But they were very reluctant for a number of storms. So I, it like, I know they, you know, that. The, I, I just would be more in favor of the progressive fining for not dealing with the same event. But if we're trying to encourage good behavior, you know, if you get a $50 fine this time and then you have a clean slate for a while, I mean, I think that the ordinance accomplished its goal, which was to motivate you to go out and do it. You know, if three snow events from, from the first one you're away and your neighbor's after you and calls you in again, you know, that isn't a subsequent <coughs> offense of the same snow event. That's the first offense of another snow event. You know, you should be, be able to be in a position with your good behavior to reset yourself. So within one week? I think, it should, I think we should use the word subsequent rather than third. Mm -hmm. I think that's easy. Yeah. But do we want to say first violation? With what? First violation, second violation. Subsequent. Within, yeah, within the same week. I don't think you can, you can really deal with weeks because after three days you could have another snow event. You know, I think it's got to be triggered by by shovelable <laughs> events or clearable events, which. Uh, do -do -do -do. Um, what if yeah. someone doesn't shovel across three snow events? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's my, my concern is that if you have, I mean, there are like absentee landlords and people who may, if they already racked up these signs and they're, they've reached that corner and 50 or whatever, that little one, mm -hmm. what's going to make them shovel it? Mm -hmm. You know, they've already got them. Mm -hmm. Well, and if. <laughs> If it, you know, it you could, if you never shoveled it, still may be subsequent violations. 
I mean, if, if you never clear the first snow event, then it never resets because every 24 hour period, it's a subsequent violation. I mean, if it snows five more times, it really is irrelevant because you're still technically every 24 hours subject to a subsequent violation of not clearing your sidewalk. The only way it resets is if you actually clear your sidewalk. Right. So if you, if you don't shovel through okay. three storms, you're gonna stay at subsequent violation continually because you never got back to zero by actually clearing it. So you're gonna be racking up $250 a day. Yeah. yeah. You agree with that analysis? I, I do. Yeah. I just think it's difficult to ask the enforcing officers right. to be able to, to tell if someone shoveled. Say there's one snow event, someone gets fined $50, mm -hmm. then they clear it. Yeah. Then another snow event comes and fills it back up again. Mm -hmm. Someone's coming around right. looking at these things, so they're going to say, "Yeah, that this is a new snow event." Mm -hmm. Or they, how are well, they going to know? It's I'm assuming a that a new snow event? if you find somebody, you're going to have to go back and see if they did it, or whether you're going to find them again. So, if you find them, fifty bucks, you're going to go back twenty-four hours later to see if they <coughs> actually responded to your fine, and if they still haven't shoveled, you find them again. So you'll know eventually that they did it because once you got them, you're going to keep going back to see if every 20, if they did it. And if they didn't do it, you're going to just keep finding them. If they did do it, you're going to go, okay, the coast is clear on this snow event. And do, is there a central database that's going to say, I mean, like what if you've got parking enforcement who's right. one and then yeah. Yeah. DPW who... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would be concerned. I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, because how would you know if there was a second yeah. finable day, you didn't go back. But I'd be concerned that go, having them go back as a necessary element to making this work might be too much of a, a burden. Well, then subsequent offenses are... And where do the plates get called into? And if, if, you're, if you're a neighbor, you're someone who has to walk on the sidewalk and you want to complain yeah. about it. And I think... You know, at what point do we get to micromanaging, or do we say, or does the police department who's new, doing it now saying, hey, you other two departments, yeah. turn your tickets into us so we can enter them in the database so we have one central right. place to keep track of this? Because we're giving them, you know, we're saying they, they may write them, but will they? You know, or will it still just be the police? So I just wanted to point out too that you know at some point the chief of police should probably weigh in on this thing if you're suggesting that his office you know be the ticket writers. We just got, for example, over 50 tickets for false alarms that were issued in 2014 in a packet. So people didn't even know that they had these tickets because they they jotted down the, you know, the information, but they never but, generated but these, a ticket until... The, but these tickets, I think they put in the door or they some way, you know, they give, I think they give like them... A yeah, they stick They're it on your, I mean, they leave it at the property. The non-criminal non, non tickets? The same one that you came in to, yeah. to pay? The one this. for the chipmunks at Charles Park. So those are the same, the same ones that are issued for non shoveling you know, road, uh, sidewalks. So I'm not sure they can do that. Um, well, we certainly can. What? We certainly can, uh, you know, ask the chief of police to comment on this. Well, also the chief, the police department is the only enforcing agency currently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are. They already do it. Mm -hmm. would, I, would be, I would be interested in whether the DPW or parking mm -hmm. would have any issues with it. Although I just assume that they report to the mayor that the mayor's offering this ordinance. So I assume the mayor's kind of boss, you know. So. Um, and, I mean, just, just the philosophy here, but I would much rather that council continue this thing than we do. You know, I'd like to get it out of here and let council then ask for more, you know, because okay. you're, you're correct. 
as miserable as we are today, after two more, after three more council meetings, ain't gonna be no more snow. Uh, so you know, I think I'd like to get it to that level, so that it can get discussed. Because okay. we're, well, there'd be only, be, you know, theoretically, after two more council meetings, when this gets there, it's April, so it kind of goes away. So I'd sort of like to get it there. Okay. Um, but I, I agree. I would suggest we just change third violation to subsequent violations. We can do that. Mm -hmm. All right. And what I might want to add to that is first violation, second violation, same event, and subsequent violations, same event, to sort of clear up the fact that yeah. you, you know, and then if council doesn't want to do that, that's fine, but I do think we need to in some way clear that up and say, you know, do you clear the slate when you clear the snow? And, you know, so if they get you for 50 bucks, the next, you know, two months later when you don't shovel, it's 50 bucks again, not 100 bucks, because uh, it's an event triggered fine. Um, yeah, no, and as I, as I said, I think there's, some clarity issues there with regards to enforcement, or I suspect there are, but I'm happy to yeah. pass it along to the council and debate it. Well, and frankly, you know, suggest to the mayor that since the police and the DPW and the parking people work for him, not us, that we could say, could you come back and let us know how your people are going to enforce this thing for our discussion would be helpful because that's his side of the fence, his, you know. We live in this lofty and poetic legislative area where we can we can say, here's how it's going to council. You may want to answer the question, how are your doobies going to deal with it at the enforcement level? Well, that seems exactly. What does the member of the public think about that? I think that's she good. likes that idea. Now, are you are you comfortable? So, you would you go along with it because we've already done your amendments to amend uh, second violation, same event. Third violation, same event. Would you argue? Uh, I would argue for subsequent violations, same event. Well, that would well accept. There, so we'd be saying there's only one step. No. First, I, second, subsequent. Correct. Okay. Same event, same event. Yes. Okay. Okay. You got that. Yeah. I think she. I think she got that. So you're making that motion. I'm making that I, amendment I, request. If yeah, I second that. Amendment. Well, okay. I guess that's all in favor. Since I, there's only two of us. Okay. So now to the moving the same, the whole thing forward, do we want to move it with a positive recommendation or just send it forward without recommendation? I, I would move a positive recommendation. And I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We can't ask the member of the public about that because that might cause some problems. But she's smiling for the record. She's smiling. <laughs> All right, okay. back to the confusing agenda. Um, we did the South Street, right? We did snow and ice. So now we're going to ask the clerk to explain to us just why Mill Street isn't gone away forever and why it's back here again. Well, the only um, sort of technical way to get rid of an ordinance that's floating around is not to is to not drop it, but to have the committee send it back to the city council with a negative recommendation. So this is the unamended version. Uh, and then um, have the city council vote on your recommendation. Okay, so this is uh, Middle Street, West and East Side, Chestnut Street. Okay, so this was the whole street. Why can't so we just table it indefinitely? We could. Well, you could. Well, not you, but the, the council city could. council. Until the end of this, so we just hang around till the end of the session, then we'll go berserk. <laughs> then you, well, then you'd have to vote on whether or not to, to carry it forward, forward so. and then. Don't do that to me, Oh, okay. We're gonna, <laughs> whatever you want See, me to do, so. I'll do. <laughs> All right. So, um, I for like things like. So, to keep Pam sane, okay. I, I move we forward this to council with a negative recommendation and suggest that they vote it down and get rid of it. I second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Again. And then, um, so Mill Street is hopefully gone for good this time. And then we also have a, 
a change to 45 on put over in uh, this is this no no there's or is, no this was that's part of plastic bags I'm sorry and that's gone that was just enforcement for plastic bags so now we have the appointment of Timothy Smith, 13 River Road, to the Agriculture Commission. And did you speak with I, the aforementioned uh, Mr. Smith? I, I tried to contact Mr. Smith. Um, wasn't able to get in touch with him. I tried several times. So I would move we continue it to the next. Until we can make it. Right. Yeah, until I get through here. He did at one point call me back. We have okay. each other. So we're going to continue Mr. Smith. Obviously, they're not growing much right now. It's all under snow, so. <laughs> All right, so um, I, I will so I move the postponement to the next meeting. Minutes. Okay, and I'll second that postponement. Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and the only, we did have another, it isn't, wasn't on our agenda, so we probably can't act on it, but there was somebody to, to on a, a sustainability commission to replace a full member. That was e it's email. coming from council tomorrow. Oh, oh, so it's not even here yet? No. So we're actually, our agenda is getting ahead of our agenda, even we're so far ahead of ourselves. Very impressive, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yes, you'll be, you'll be referred that for <clears throat> tomorrow. For, and then we'll see you be talking to her. And she's already an associate member, so she's a known person to that committee, and she's taking a, so she's just moving up to a full slot. Um, so, Madam Clerk, is there anything left on our very confusing agenda that we missed? I don't think there is. is. No. Do you think there is? No. You know, I, think there is? I, don't think, I don't think there is. There's nothing. You have covered it all. God bless us. Okay. Uh, move to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. We're done. Thank and you. we free our.